Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm talking about some brilliant books to read in the winter. It's quite appropriate for me to be talking about these books right now because just outside my bedroom window there is snow on the ground and it's been quite a chilly weekend. So this is definitely the time to curl up with a good wintry read. I always love reading in tune with the season. I've been enjoying some snowy books myself so far this month and I'm really looking forward to sharing my suggestions with you all as well as a few books that are on my to be read pile that I'm hoping to get to before the end of the winter. Last winter I did a video on great books to read during the colder months so I'll link that video in the description box down below if you'd like to have more of my suggestions for wintry reads too. But let's get started with this big stack here. I recently read A Winter Away by Elizabeth Fair and I so enjoyed it. It was the perfect, cosy, winter weekend read. It really was such a fun one. I love this edition by the publisher Dean Street Press. I think it's so attractive with the Eric Revillius artwork on the cover. Elizabeth Fair is a new to me writer. All of her books are set mainly I think in the 1950s, perhaps a few in the early 60s, but a lot in the 1950s. And that's a time period that I always enjoy reading about. She wrote six novels and this is one of them. Now I want to read all of the other ones because they're really fight, they're really fun. Um, good humoured books, a bit in the style of Angela Thurkel and her sense of humour reminds me of Jane Austen or Barbara Pym. It's a very British, very wry sense of humour but I really enjoy that about her writing. A Winter Away is about a young girl called Maud who goes to stay with her cousin who, who she calls sort of Aunt Alice and on Alice's companion, who doesn't particularly welcome Maud and views her as rather an intruder on, on their home. But Maud gets a job working as secretary to Old M, as he's known, this elderly gentleman who owns a large but disintegrating country house. Maud falls in love with this house and she really gets on with old M too, much to her credit because he's rather difficult and very eccentric and really rather a miser. But she helps him to write his letters and tackles the library, which is a complete mess filled with books that old M has picked up in auctions or that have been left to him in wills and he's never sorted it out. And as she works for Old M, Maud meets both his estranged nephew and Old M's son. And she's in turns intrigued and also slightly repelled by both of them. But there's so much humour in this about the members of the village, all the sort of local gossip going on and some of the incidents that happen. And Maud herself I find a really lovable heroine. She reminds me a little bit of Flora Post from Cold Comfort Farm or Emma Woodhouse in that she does rather like to manage other people a bit but she often doesn't realise what her own emotions really are or quite what's going on and that was just a really fun part of the book too. But yes, this was a lovely read and a good winter one because it's all set during the winter. There's some very funny little sherry parties that they have around Christmas that are far too mean on the sherry. <laughs> uh, but it's just a really good book and interesting actually with all that sort of post-World War II rationing that was taking place and the cottage that Maud lives in is always freezing cold so there's a lot about being cold as well as a bit hungry in this book but a really entertaining one. And then this is always a favourite of mine, Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier and this is such a good 
wintry read. It actually starts out in November. It's one of her historical books that Daphne du Maurier wrote and it's full of excitement. It's about a young girl who again is sent to stay with her aunt at Jamaica Inn, which is an inn sort of buried on the moors of Cornwall. And her aunt is a very timid woman who's married to a real bully of a man. And what becomes clear is that the inn is in, front, is in fact a front for violence and murder and smuggling and this gang of criminals essentially run by Mary's uncle. And there is a bit of romance here in that she gets drawn to her uncle's brother but she doesn't know whether she can trust his brother or not, what side he's really on, how black his heart really is. And so it's quite a suspenseful thriller, this book. I really enjoyed it. Some of it is a tad on the melodramatic side, but it's just the sort of book that will keep you completely engrossed turning the pages by the fire. So again, it's a very good cold weather read. There are some dramatic scenes in this where the weather really features. So highly recommend this one. And then this is a book I really enjoyed reading last summer actually, it's The Black Birder by Dorothy B. Hughes. And I was, even though I really enjoyed the book, I was a bit annoyed that I was reading it in the summer because actually it's a brilliant winter book which I hadn't realised it would be. But this is set during World War, World War II, it's set in America and it's about a young woman who had become involved in the French resistance but then fled France to the States but she knows that the Gestapo are, are on her trail and she thinks she's been spotted in New York City and a man ends up being killed right outside her road. So she's got both the police and the Gestapo after her. So she's a woman on the run and she's also trying to find her fiancé. She's not sure what has happened to him. So she decides to try to flee to New Mexico where she's heard a mysterious figure called the Blackbirder can smuggle people out of the US into Mexico. So she wants to make her escape and also see if she can find any news of her fiancé. It's a really thrilling book. I mean, I was completely gripped from the first page. And the New Mexico setting is so dramatic, so atmospheric. Of course, it gets so cold there in the winter and there are amazing blizzard scenes and she has to be on the run trying to flee in a car and on foot through the snow and everything, hiding out in an abandoned house and being so cold. So again, the weather really plays a vital role in this story and it adds to its drama and its suspense as well. And I highly recommend this. It was such an engrossing and gripping read featuring a wonderful heroine who sorts everything out for herself. You know, there's no being rescued by <laughs> a man really in this. She shows herself to be just so gutsy. I really, really enjoyed that about this story. And the ending is satisfying, but also a little ambiguous, which I enjoyed too. So yeah, a really great read for winter, that one. And then this book, The Glove Maker by Anne Weisgarber, I'm not sure if that's how you say her last name, um, but this is a really good book to read in the winter and in January and February in particular because the book is mainly set in those months of the year. This is an historical book, it's set in Utah in the 1880s. And this was again such a brilliant page turner. I really raced through this one and read it very quickly. It's about a woman who's a glove maker. She makes her own gloves, cuts them all out, out of leather. And she is in her small home in Utah in quite an isolated, closed off community. And 
she's waiting at home for her husband to return. Her husband is a wheel maker who goes off traveling to earn money mending the wheels of wagons and so on. And her, her husband is meant to have returned several weeks ago, but he still hasn't and she's just beginning to grow anxious. Then one evening, a man taps at her door seeking refuge. He's a Mormon who's being chased by um, lawmakers and he's on the run. And she is a Mormon herself and she helps to shield him, knowing that this will put her into great danger. He only stays one night and then he leaves the next day. However, she knows that there are going to be men on the hunt for this man and there's a really vivid scene where she realises that he has left tracks in the freshly fallen snow and that no other snow is coming so these tracks won't be covered up and so if men come looking it will be very easy for them to see the tracks made by a man and his horse and leading to her stable and so on. So she's got to try and cover up these tracks, which she does with a sort of sledge and, oh, but it's just, she's really on this race against the clock. So it's really dramatic and your heart sort of pounds along with her in this book. There's a bit of a romance in this story too, which is unexpected, but I found quite satisfying. But really it's just a very gripping read and yeah, I really recommend it to such a good cold weather book. And then this is, has been a book that I've enjoyed reading this winter. It's The Diabolical Bones by Bella Ellis. It's the second book in the Bronte mystery series that she's writing, where she imagines the Bronte sisters as these sort of lady detectives that end up solving mysteries that they come across um, in Yorkshire. And I really enjoy them. I mean, you do have to suspend your disbelief, obviously, a bit to sort of enter into this world where the Bronte sisters could have banded together as detectives. But once you've got past that, they're actually really fun. And you can tell that they're very well researched. Um, Bella Ellis has written a lot of detail, historic detail into the stories too about the Brontes and also about their brother which is really interesting. So I think any fan of the Brontes would enjoy um, these books. This is the one that's really set at winter time and Bella Ellis is so good at describing what winter would have been like for them. So cold, so brutal really in many ways. And the mystery as well is quite intriguing in this. It's all just really well done and it makes quite a good cold weather read again. So especially as I'm living in Yorkshire, I think I really enjoyed reading this one. And then one of my favourite Agatha Christie books to read in the winter is called The Sitterford Mystery. And I don't actually have a physical copy of this book, which is a shame because it's one of my favourites, but a lot of the Agatha Christie's, I have to say, I only have on Kindle or I listen to them on Audible because there are just so many of them and I only have so much shelf space. So this is one that I just have on Kindle. But I really recommend it. Again, it's one book where the weather, the snow in particular, plays a really vital role. It's set in Devon and it's a really good country house type mystery. It's the mystery sort of starts out one evening where there's a gathering around an Ouija board in a country house and it seems like a spirit has spelt out murder. But it's a classic Agatha Christie book and it features a very likeable heroine as well in this one. This is a standalone one, it's not an Hercule Poirot or Miss Marple or anything like that. 
but it's a really fun read, great one for winter, so one that I like to return to always in the winter time. I like to listen to this one a lot on Audible. And then a few children's ones to recommend for winter. This one I read recently and I absolutely adored it. It's called The Ship from Simnel Street by Jenny Overton. If you watched my videos on books I recommended for Christmas, then you'll know that I recommended The 13 Days of Christmas by Jenny Overton. That's one of my favourite Christmas reads. But I recently read this book by her and I absolutely adored it. This is for an older audience. It's more of a YA book and adults can really enjoy this one too. It's such a slight book that you can read it in an evening and it's well worth it. Now this takes place all sort of through a year but there are some wonderful wintry scenes in this book and because so much of the action takes place around a bakery it just seems like such a good wintry kind of read because they always talk about how warm the bakery is and they're always baking such delicious things and that just seems to pair very well with winter time for me so I really enjoyed reading this one just the other week it's set in Regency times, so during the Napoleonic Wars, in fact, and it's about two sisters who are brought up in, um, well, near a bakery. Their father is a baker in town, and his bakes are very well established. He's become quite prosperous, and their mother is rather proud and insists upon having a newly built house, and she wants her daughters to marry well. She has her eye on the local banker's son for Polly, the eldest daughter. But Polly's heart becomes captured by a soldier who is sent off to fight in Spain. And she ends up running off after him. She dresses as a male clerk, gets on board a ship and sets off to Spain to try to find him. And what the story is really about is her sister who's left behind. Father goes off in search of Polly and her sister stays behind and starts to really help running the bakery while her father is no longer at the helm. And I love this book because like I said, it takes you through the year through so many old celebrations and country customs and the traditional bakes that they had at certain times of year, like the special cakes they make for Candlemas Day, for instance, the Simnel cakes they make for Easter, special breads that they make for harvest festivals and so on. And I loved that about this book because I'm so interested in reading about old country customs like that and country recipes that you don't really come across anymore. And the historical detail in this book is marvellous. I mean, I think Jenny Overton, it's a shame she wrote so few books because she researched her books so well. They're so interesting because of the historical detail. She also includes a lot of old folk songs in this book too, which I absolutely love. And she just gives you a real feeling for what small town life would have been like in those days and how much a the bakery would have been such an integral integral part of the town life. And she even describes, for instance, how with the 13 baker's dozen, they would never accept any money for that 13th loaf. And those loaves were given out to the poor every morning. And just little details like that that I found so fat uh, fascinating and satisfying. So I really loved this and there's a wonderful bit too where the mum who feels really guilty decides that as a grand gesture they're going to bake a wedding cake, special plum cake, for 
every member of the battalion of sort of Polly's um, new husband's battalion and they send off a thousand and two hundred cakes <laughs> for Polly in the hope that they'll find her and it's all about how they bake all these cakes and hire their own ship to send them <laughs> yeah it's a really sweet story um, there's a lovely ending to it as well so one I highly recommend and then this is a book that I recently read too and I actually wish that I'd come across this book when I was a child because I would have absolutely have adored it. I still love reading it now but I just know this would have really captured my imagination when I was little. It's called The Snowstorm, it's by Beryl Nethercliffe and it's about two twin sisters and their younger brother who again are sent off to stay with an aunt and their aunt lives in a lovely English country manor house but she's finding it increasingly difficult to run the house and to keep it up she's always short of money and the children try to find ways they can help their aunt to raise money for the house and to return it back to the glorious state that it used to be in but they can't find a way to save the house. But one day they discover this beautiful snow globe in the library and they shake the globe and they find that it actually has magical properties in that it can transport the children back in time. And they end up meeting a young boy who used to live in the house. They meet other former occupants of the house who are also their ancestors. And they learn all of these secrets about the house that enable them to end up saving the house and restoring the family's fortunes. It's a really charming book. There are some lovely descriptions of lavish teas, which I especially enjoyed. It's mainly all set in January, so it was a great January read. There's a dramatic snowstorm in this. There's just so much to enjoy in this story. I always like a time slip children's story too, so I loved that aspect of the book as well. But yes, a really charming read. I think this was published as The Snow Ghosts in the States, so if you're having trouble finding it under the English title, The Snowstorm, then know that The Snow Ghosts is the same book, I believe. And then another book that I read over well, just recently, actually, earlier in January, is Cut Off from Crumpets by Margaret J. Baker. This is the follow-up book to Cast Away Christmas, which I also spoke about in my previous videos, and I absolutely loved reading this sequel. Cast Away Christmas was all about the Ridley family, which is two sisters and a brother, um, getting cut off from their parents by accident. They end up staying in this country house at Christmas with floodwaters rising. Well, in this book, it's snow that's the problem. And they get, this time they are with their parents, but they're cut off from crumpets, cut off from everything really by a snowstorm. And it's about how they unite as a family to overcome all of the obstacles that that snowstorm brings, like frozen pipes, like neighbours in trouble. There's just so much to enjoy in this book. It's a really heartwarming read and I was so thrilled to get this one. And then always a favourite winter read for me, a real classic, is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Of course, this book famously starts at Christmas time, but there are other famous scenes I love from it, like the ice skating scene where Amy falls through the ice. And yes, there's just so many wintry moments in this book that really stick in my mind. So it's one that I love to read at winter. It's just always such a magical book and the perfect one to curl up with by the fireside. Similarly, I love to read White Boots or this is known as Skating Shoes in America by Noel Stratfield. I love her book Ballet Shoes, that's one of my favourites. 
that book is of course all about ballet and White Boots is all about ice skating and it's about a young girl whose family don't have very much money so she finds it very difficult even to buy her own pair of skating shoes and to have skating lessons but she has so much natural talent paired with a very strong work ethic. And I love that about Noel Streckfield's books is that she always talks about the importance not only of natural talent, but how that, that on its own isn't enough. You have to pair that with being a hard worker and taking your performance and your gro growing your own skills really seriously. And in this, there's a friendship that turns into a bit of a rivalry um, because another girl in the story who has so much money and all natural advantages, she has a lot of natural talent, however, she doesn't work very hard and her heart in the end isn't really in ice skating as much. In the end though, this ultimately is a story about female friendship too, as well as female ambition. And I really enjoy that about this book and it is a heartwarming read. So always one I like to return to as well. A few non-fiction choices now. I've mentioned wintering a lot on here, I feel, so I won't say too much about it, but it was definitely one of my favourite books of 2020. It's a brilliant memoir. In this book, Catherine May looks at the lessons that you can learn from nature and how natural how the natural world essentially survives winter and she looks at nature in terms of how it can inspire her own life and her own periods of despondency of wintering essentially when her life doesn't go as well as she maybe would want it to and I think we can all relate to that feeling we can all relate to so much of what Catherine May writes about in this book but in some ways this is also a real love letter to winter Catherine May loves that season and she also writes about some of the books for instance that she loves to read at Christmas time and in the winter what she loves about the cold as well and how cold can actually be good for you in many ways too there are wonderful descriptions of her swimming in the sea all through the year and how that really trained her not only to be more resilient in so many different ways but also in a love of the cold too so yeah this is a brilliant book to read at this time of year this is another memoir called Paris in Winter, an illustrated memoir by David Coggins. And David Coggins is a wonderful illustrator as well as writer. And these years cover, I think, 1997? Yeah, 1997, right up to 2010, where he and his wife and children would go at and spend every New Year's in Paris and have a few weeks in Paris in January. So this is a really good January read as well. And if you love Paris, then I'm sure you'd appreciate this book. There are beautiful illustrations of Paris. There are wonderful reminiscences of amazing French food, French meals that they ate in Parisian restaurants. There's just so much to enjoy in this book if you're a bit of a Francophone, which I definitely am. So this is a lovely winter read too. And then I absolutely adore this cookbook. It's called Sugared Orange Recipes and Stories from a Winter in Poland by Bieta Sertzowska. Sorry, I'm sure I've mispronounced that. But it's a wonderful look back to the author's childhood which was spent in rural Poland and of the family recipes that she continues to make as well as all of the memories that she has from that idyllic time in her life. There's so many family stories about what her grandmother cooked for instance in here that's really charming 
lots of delicious recipes that I really want to make. But there's, the photography is also amazing. So many sort of glorious wintry scenes all through Poland, both in the cities and in the countryside and the amazing forests. And it's just such a delight to flick through this book and look at the amazing photography as well as be inspired by what you might want to try making and yes it's just a glorious celebration of winter as well as of good eating and childhood and family and of course of Poland itself too. It definitely makes me want to visit Poland when I look at this book there are just so many beautiful scenes and yes I love the way it's all laid out and designed and it makes it the sort of cookbook that you just want to read as well as to cook from which is my favourite type so I absolutely love this one and then I also wanted to chat about some of the books that are on my to be read pile for winter so let me just replenish my stack Okay, back again with more books. So these books are ones that I would love to get to this month or in February. I'm not sure if I'll be able to because I'm having to do a lot of reading at the moment actually for a couple of articles I'm writing for a magazine. But if I have a chance then these are some of the books that I would also like to read and I thought I'd share them with you because they might inspire you with some winter reading material too. So first up is this book, Swiss Sonata by Gwesselin Graham. Now I first came across her writing through Persephone books with this book, Earth and High Heaven. And this one I think is set either in Montreal or Quebec can't remember now but it's one I want to read and it made me interested to also learn a little bit more about her and Swiss Sonata is her first novel or at least it's earlier than um, Earth and High Heaven I think it's her first one and it sounds really interesting it's set in Switzerland in the 1930s and it's well it's set in a girls finishing school in Switzerland and it starts off in January so that's why I'd like to try and get to it this month and of course all the snowy Swiss slope scenes I'm sure will feature but it's meant to be very good and it also talks about the rise of fascism the political climate in Switzerland just before the outbreak of World War II and it sounds like a really good read as you know I love reading books from the interwar period and this one sounds very interesting and she's meant to be a really good writer so this definitely sold me and having gone to school in Switzerland myself a Swiss setting always really appeals so I'm looking forward to turning to this one Another book that starts out in January that I want to read is Tracy Chevalier's Falling Angels. This is set in Edwardian England. It starts off in Highgate Cemetery. The eyes of two girls meet and they end up becoming friends, bringing both their families together. And this is a story about these two families. It sounds really interesting. I often enjoy Tracy Chevalier's writing. I've of course walked around Highgate a lot myself when I lived in Hampstead so I'm intrigued by the setting as well as the time period and the fact that it starts off in January has put this book to the top of my to be read pile. So I would like to try and get to that one. A few ghost stories I'd like to get to this month as well, especially this one, The Great Coat by Helen Dunmore. This is set in Yorkshire as well as in winter time, which really intrigues me. 
It says, it is the winter of 1952 and Isabel Carey is struggling to adjust to the realities of married life in Yorkshire. Isolated and lonely, she is also intensely cold. It does get very cold here, so I can understand that. And her husband, a doctor, is rarely home. And then one night she discovers an old RAF greatcoat in the back of a cupboard. She puts it on her bed for warmth and is startled by a knock at her window. Outside is a young man, a pilot, and he wants to come in. So that sounds really intriguing to me. It sounds like that would be a great read. And yeah, definitely want to get to that one. Another ghost story that I'd like to get to is Thin Air by Michelle Paver. So many people have recommended this to me over the years and it's just been sitting on my shelf for a really long time. I think my mum has read this too and she liked it a lot so I would like to get to this one. It's about um, mountain climbing, a sort of mountain climbing ex expedition I think in the Himalayas. Yeah, in the Himalayas in 1935 but it's also a ghost story. So it sounds really intriguing to me. I'd like to finally get to that one. This is one my mum has recommended to me. It's When Nights Were Cold by Susanna Jones. I think this is also about mountain climbing. It says, as the eve of the Second World War approaches, Grace Farringdon, once the daring founder of a women's mountain climbing society, is trapped in her Dulwich home, haunted by the terrible events that took place out on the mountains year, years before. Grace is the last surviving member of the secret society she founded, and at last, she is finally ready to remember and to confess. So this definitely sounds like a story that will send shivers down your spine when you read it, and quite intriguing. Also very interesting to hear about uh, a women mountain, climb, mountain climbing society, because so often you just his stories from men about mountaineering. So that intrigues me about this as well. And then finally two rereads that I would really like to do. So I remember being absolutely terrified by the wolves of Wilbury of Wilby Chase by Joan Aiken when I was little. And I really want to reread this one. I don't really remember a lot about it. Although of course Joan Aiken has set this book in a bit of an alternate world which looks like our world but is also subtly different. A, a little bit like how Philip Pullman um, does his books and in this world England is still completely, it's become completely overrun by wolves. And there's a horrible governess that features in this book I remember is really terrifying. And she sends the children off to a place that they can never be found and they have to try to outwit her. But there's a wonderful chase scene in this book. And yeah, I just remember it was really scary <laughs> when I was little, but I'd like to return to it and to read it again because I also remember being completely gripped by it and it makes a brilliant wintry read and then I read Lorna Doon just in my early teens which is maybe a bit of an unlikely choice but I also absolutely adored it it's quite a melodramatic story and I think I just really got into that <laughs> when I was younger I haven't read it since though and I'd really like to reread it and see what I think of it now there's also one of the most famous blizzards in literature in this book. It's set in Devon and it talks about a horrific snowstorm that was so bad the snow actually forced the windows to collapse in inwards because of the weight of the snow and how even the sort of kettle on the fireplace froze and yeah I remember that as being really atmospheric so for that, it would be quite a good wintry read, although it's one of these epic stories that spans quite a few years and um, definitely several seasons. But there is a really famous snow scene in this, so I would like to read it again 
for that reason and also just because I remember absolutely loving it but a lot of people think this is quite a boring story <laughs> so we'll have to see I'm interested to read it again and see what I think but anyway those are my recommendations for you to read in these colder months. I hope that they will also help you while away the time as we are in lockdown in the UK. These are all good books to curl up with on a cold evening. will hopefully provide some excellent distraction as well. I'm definitely looking forward to picking up a few of these myself. So I hope you enjoyed my recommendations. Let me know if any of them tempt you and do give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed it, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face that pops up on the screen over here. But I'll be back again very soon with more bookish videos. Thanks so much for watching and see you again soon. Bye.